There's a horror movie I love where no one's allowed to talk because scary monsters will hear them and eat them and it's fantastic, but a main character has a cochlear implant and they get the depiction all wrong, which is a shame because cochlear implants are fascinating and ingenious devices and because it breaks the movie for me. So what are cochlear implants exactly and how can they help even the profoundly deaf hear? A cochlear implant is a medical device that goes, as the name suggests, inside your cochlea. Quick refresher, that's the spiral structure of three fluid-filled canals coiled up like a snail shell in your inner ear, past the eardrum, hammer, anvil, and stirrup. In one canal, there are hair cells along the length of the spiral. At the base of the spiral, the hair cells respond to higher frequency sounds, and at the apex, they move at low frequencies. These movements trigger nerve cells, converting the sound waves to electrical impulses and passing the signal onto the brain for processing. That's just a basic overview of how it all works, assuming it does work. The most common form of hearing loss is sensory neural, where the hair cells, nerves, or brain aren't functioning like they do in a hearing person. Sensory neural hearing loss can be caused by a lot of things, such as age, loud noises, trauma, disease, or genetics. Sometimes it can be treated with a hearing aid, which is basically just an amplifier that boosts the volume of speech while cutting down on background noise. But when a hearing aid is not enough, a cochlear implant may do the trick. Instead of getting the outer and middle ear to transmit sound waves like a hearing aid does, a cochlear implant goes straight to the finish line. It consists of two parts, a speech processor and the actual implant. The speech processor sits on the back of the ear and is just what it sounds like. It takes the sounds it hears and converts them to electrical signals. Those signals are sent to the implant, which rests under the skin and connects to the speech processor outside via a magnet. The implant has a long array of electrodes that actually curl up inside the cochlea, and when these electrodes go off, they trigger the nerve cells like the hair normally would. Even though the device itself isn't making any noise, the brain interprets the electrical pulses it pipes in as though it were sound. And just like that, people can start to make out speech when before they were in a world of complete silence. You hear that, John Krasinski? They make no sound. I'm still really bothered by that. It's not a perfect replica of speech, and it's not the same as having a full range of hearing. The cochlea has thousands of hair cells, while a cochlear implant only has a couple dozen electrodes, and they can activate overlapping regions of neurons, so the tones of speech and music get blurred together. Programs that help the speech processor to encode tone and timbre can aid music recognition, and by mapping an individual's cochlea, scientists can improve speech recognition by actually turning off certain electrodes that were activating unintended neurons. Cochlear implants are a topic of fierce debate within the deaf community, and plenty of people who are deaf prefer not to have them because they live happy lives and are part of a community. For others, though, they can't picture their lives without one. Either way, I think we can all agree they're a marvel of science and technology, and that A Quiet Place was great, but they could have spent like five seconds Googling cochlear implants. If we're coming in loud and cochlear, be sure to click that subscribe button. And on the topic of audio, did you ever wonder what's happening in your brain when you hear someone scream? Trace explains in this episode why your body goes into a whole cascade of defensive responses when you hear it. Be sure to subscribe to Seeker, and thanks for watching.